If you are anything close to my age, you can probably remember the AMD Athlon CPU from back in 2000. Believe it or not, after years of suffering, the Athlon CPU was really something to get excited about from AMD. At this point in time, Athlon was actually beating out Pentium 3 in gaming benchmarks. Even the media was making note of Intel's struggles back in 2000 and how AMD had actually gained some ground in the CPU processor market. No matter how excited us gaming nerds were at the time to see Athlon come along, the Intel Intel Inside campaign had already been around for almost 10 years, and the non-gamers among us had always thought that Intel was simply the CPU to go with. Just as we talked about last week with Nvidia absolutely dominating the GPU market, you can see here in 2005 that Intel had over 80% of the sales in the CPU world. And as excited as we got about Athlon once upon a time, AMD could not replicate that success, and in fact when the bulldozer line of CPUs came out a few years later, well, we weren't excited. The AMD FX CPUs did come out with a full family at launch with four, six, and eight core CPUs, and they did price them aggressively against Intel. However, the performance just was not there to unseat the king. I think a lot of us who have been around the PC world for a long time would look at this and say, that was probably the point in time that Intel fell into complacency because they had no real challenges coming out of AMD or anybody else for that matter. With absolutely no competition on the horizon, I think a lot of us saw Intel CPU launches and felt very meh when there was nothing new or exciting in generation to generational upgrades. In fact, we'll see this get replayed by Intel a couple more times, very recently as a matter of fact, but when the 7000 series came out, it just wasn't enough of an elite from the 6000 series. The complacency and a lack of innovation over at Intel really didn't seem to matter a whole lot. As you pick up this graph here in 2012, you can see that Intel still controls over 72% of global CPU sales. If we fast forward this graph to 2016, you can see Intel has an even more dominant lead at 82% of the global market. Dare I say an Nvidia sized slice of the CPU pie. In 2017, AMD launched Ryzen the first real hit CPU they had had in almost 20 years. As exciting as the early Zen offerings were here from AMD for multi-threaded, perhaps job-related tasks, it was not exactly the same story for gaming. However, they did have a share of the market now, and they certainly were willing to build on that. In 2018, when AMD launched the Ryzen 2000 series, this was not a huge jump, but some incremental improvements along the way. You went from 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer construction. You also had unlocked cores, so you could do some manual overclocking. And of course, you still had a lot of price to performance. In 2019, AMD launched the 3000 series of Ryzen CPUs. Now, at this point, you actually had a real banger on your hands, guys. Although the 3000 series of CPUs from AMD was still under the Ryzen umbrella, Zen 2 was literally an entirely new kind of architecture from AMD. Gone was the system on chip series that they had done with Ryzen 1000 and Ryzen 2000, and now they had gotten to their famous chiplet design, which you had an IO die that controlled the in and out from the CPU itself, but you could also have multiple CCDs and multiple CCXs in those CCDs to create for a much higher thread count. Intel was simply not willing to be outdone, and in April of 2020, they brought out an absolute banger with the Core i9-10900K CPU. Although Intel was struggling to keep up with AMD, and it was still on their 14 nanometer process size, the 10900K rocked a very solid 10 cores and 20 threads, and could accomplish an absolutely screaming 5.3 gigahertz right out of the box. For several years, the 10900K was simply one of the best gaming CPUs in existence. How did AMD choose to follow their own success with the 3000 series of Ryzen and the 10900K from Intel? Well, they brought out the 5000 series of Ryzen, and let me tell you, this is where the rubber really meets the road, sports fans. One of the really big gains when AMD moved from the Zen 2 layout to Zen 3 was how they organized their cores around a central amount of cache that each CCX had access to. Effectively, what this did is lowered the latency substantially and let all the cores talk to each other in a much faster way. After such a popular CPU as the 10900K and trying to keep up with AMD, you think Intel would bring out a can't miss CPU. However, in 2021, that's not exactly what they did. And the 11th gen debuted to kind of, well, frankly, meh reviews and not a lot of excitement. I think when a lot of us looked at the 11900K, our thoughts kind of wrapped around these two things here is it went from 10 cores to eight cores 
and it's consuming more power. And none of us were particularly excited about that. Most of us tend to agree that the 11th gen just should have been skipped one way or the other. However, when the 12th gen launched from Intel in fall of 2021, you knew you had a really serious set of CPUs coming to market. Not only were the 12th gen better at gaming, they were also better at productivity. You saw performance cores and efficiency cores. And on top of that, you could set up your system to run DDR4 or DDR5 RAM at that point. However, in 2022, AMD slipped in the 5800X 3D. And I think for a lot of us, this was a real monumental point in PC gaming. On its surface, the 5800X 3D did not look like anything extraordinary. In fact, if memory serves, you couldn't even easily overclock it. And it was only eight cores. However, AMD has gone ahead and put 96 megabytes of L3 cache in this CPU, meaning there is more information right there next to the die that the CPU does not have to reach back to RAM for. That allows it to come up with instructions even faster inside of a game. In the fall of 2022, both the heavyweights were added again and Intel launched the i9-13900K and their 13th generation of desktop CPU. Now, by and large, these CPUs met to awesome reviews Everybody was very thrilled with the lineup from Intel. When you look at the 13900K from Intel at this generation, they had eight performance cores, but up their efficiency cores to 16. Now I would argue that may not have a huge effect on gaming. However, how does 5.8 gigahertz right out of the box sound? That is something that definitely moves the needle and was a real banger on this one. However, in virtually the same launch window, AMD has launched the Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs. Now let me tell you, this is when you get some outside the box thinking goes as far as the chiplet design, along with a better overall design using smaller node processes. Literally forever, the thorn in the side of AMD has been their lack of clock speed when they compare themselves to Intel. So they've almost caught up with clock speed in the 7000 series, and this is building on the faster Infinity fabric that they introduced in the 5000 series. So what you see now are some really incredible CPUs from AMD. And although AMD made us all wait for it, for a little while, they eventually launched a 7800X3D version. Remember the extra cache, just like the 5800X3D. As you can see here on the 7800X3D, what they have done is up the total L2 and L3 cache to 104 megabytes. Now remember PC enthusiasts, Intel has a very deep bench when it comes to engineering excellence. And of course they have a huge war chest when it comes to money to put things into play and to do research and development. What is all that going to mean for the rumored Arrow Lake CPUs that are supposed to be coming out sometime late in 2024 using the LGA 1851 socket with a new series of motherboards? Well, it's really tough to tell. As you can see here over the last few years, Intel has had some absolutely marvelous CPUs to work with, and they've also had some upgrades that have been kind of, well, not that fantastic. As you can see here from the end of last year, although Intel still had a lead, it's getting smaller and smaller every quarter. And I would imagine the next year or maybe two, AMD is going to even the playing field. Unlike the GPU market where we see total domination by Nvidia, I think the CPU market and the competition between Intel and AMD is going to be wonderful for consumers in the years to come.